Welcome to this Real Python exercises course, where you'll practice working with strings and string methods. Our exercises courses are all about training. You'll train the process of writing code by solving carefully selected exercises. You'll also train reading other people's code and communicating your thought process. Doing all that, you'll practice the concepts that you've learned about in an associated course or tutorial and help make them stick. In the upcoming lessons, I'll introduce you to tasks, give you an opportunity to solve them yourself, and then show you step-by-step step how I solved each of them. You'll go through three steps for each task. Learn about the exercise, code your own solution, and then compare your solution and the process that got you there to mine. When I walk you through a task, I'll explain what I do and also why I do it like that. That'll give you a chance to compare not just our final solutions, but also how we got there. Ideally, this can help you gain some insights on the process of getting from a task description to a working solution in code. This course consists primarily of short exercises that you can tackle one after another. You'll learn to work with strings, modify strings with string methods, collect user input, work with strings and numbers, use more string methods, and finally, you can apply your knowledge in a little challenge where you'll write a program to convert your user's input into lead speak. The idea for this exercises course is that you should have watched the Python basics course on strings and string methods before starting this one. If you went through that course, then you're well equipped to solve the tasks that you're about to encounter. The concepts that you should have heard about and will practice are Python strings, string methods, user input collection, and type conversion. If you're already somewhat familiar with these concepts, but you want to fortify your knowledge with practical programming tasks, then this course is exactly right for you. Before you get started, there's another tiny bit of background for this course, which is that I'll use IDLE, the integrated development and learning environment that comes with Python. If you've gone through the Python basics courses, then you're already familiar with the tool. If not, and you want to know more, then you can check out these associated courses that cover getting started with IDLE. But I won't use any specific features of IDLE, so if you're here to train outside of the Python Basics course, then feel free to use whatever tool you like to solve the upcoming coding tasks. And that's all there is to say to get you set up. If you're ready to get started and do hands-on programming, then see you in the next lesson where you'll start with the first review exercise. Are you ready to get started? Hmm, I didn't hear anything. Could you speak up, please? All right, that's better. Let's go. Here is your first exercise. What is a string? Very philosophical question, but we're going to go about it a little more practically. Your task is going to be to print four individual strings that fulfill certain conditions. First one is that there should be double quotation marks inside the string. The second one should have an apostrophe inside the string. The third one should have multiple lines with white space preserved. And the fourth one should be coded on multiple lines, but that it gets printed only on a single line. These are different ways of constructing strings, and it's just a way to remind yourself how you can create strings that fulfill the certain conditions. Go ahead, do this now, and once you're done with your solution, hop over to the next lesson, where I will solve the four tasks as well, and then you can compare with my solution. Here I am in the interactive idle shell. I'll go ahead and take quick notes of the different tasks that I've got to do here. There were four tasks. I would like to start with just taking notes on what I'm supposed to do, which helps me get organized and remember what the task is actually. So the first one was to print a string with double quotes. So I want double quotes in the string. That's the first task. Then the second one was to have an apostrophe in the string. The third one was to have a multi line string that also gets printed on multiple lines. And the fourth one was to write a string in multi-line, but print it in a single line. So I just took some short notes to remind myself of the tasks, and I'm going to get going. The first one is to print double quotes in the string. And I can do that using single quotation marks to delimit the string. And then I can use double quotation marks inside. I open up a string by putting a single quotation mark. Then I can write something in here. So I will say there are double quotes in this string. 
and I surrounded the words double quotes with actual double quotes. And I should bring fine because I'm not mixing the quotation marks. I'm using single quotation marks to delimit the string. And then the double quotation marks inside, they're not considered as string delimiters, but they're just the characters, double quotation marks. So now I press enter and my print call executes and I get as an output the string. Great. Second one, an apostrophe in the string. Oh. Do another print call, and now I will use double quotation marks to delimit the string. So I'm opening it up with a double quotation mark, then I can write something. I will say, this string's got an apostrophe. And I use the apostrophe after the word string, so this string has got an apostrophe. This is not an English lesson, and I wouldn't be the best person to teach this anyways. But I, I do have a single quotation mark or an apostrophe in the string, and I can now press enter, and this will execute and work fine. Exercise three was to write a multi-line string that also prints on multiple lines. So this I can do by using triple quotation marks. So for example, triple double quotation marks or triple single quotation marks works the same. And now I can say this string was written on multiple lines. Well, not yet. Let me press enter. And then I can continue it, the string and say, and it displays across multiple lines. And I need to close the string. So I will close it again with triple double quotation marks. One, two, three. And then also close the parentheses from the print function. And now I'm ready to press enter and this executes. And as you can see, the new line character, so the enter that I pressed in here, this new line character is also part of the string. So the output includes it and that's why it displays on two lines. And then finally, the last task, write a multi-line string that prints on a single line. And you can do that with escaping the new line character. Now I'm just going to use one double quotation mark and I'll say this one line string was written and then I will use the backslash character which escapes it's a special character that escapes the following character which in this case is going to be a new line because after putting the backslash character I will press enter and continue typing in the next line but Python considers this to still be part of the previous line so I'll continue writing my string saying using multiple lines and then close the string. With a string like this one that's delimited with only one quotation mark, spreading a string over multiple lines like I do here only works when you use the backslash character. Otherwise, Python would raise a syntax error. Then I press enter, and as you can see, it displays on just a single line because I escaped the new line character that I used in here. All right, so that was a quick recap on the different ways you can mix and match quotation marks when writing your string literals. Here's your second exercise, concatenation. Create two strings, concatenate them, and print the resulting string. And then there's the question, can you also add a space between them only using concatenation? So pick two words that you always wanted to concatenate together, go over into your Python REPL, and make it happen. After that, move on to the next lesson and watch me do it. The task was to create two strings and assign them to variables. Concatenate them without a space and concatenate them with a space. Let's get started by creating two variables that point to strings. I'll start with string underscore left, which I will point to a string called bat. And then I'll do another one, string underscore right, that I'll point to man. And now I can use a call to print to stick these two together. So I'll open up the parentheses after writing print and then type string underscore left plus string underscore right. Close the parentheses. So as you can see here, I'm using the plus operator, which 
if you use it with strings, it concatenates them together. So it literally stick bat and man together without any space in between. I press enter to confirm. We get the string batman stuck together. Now, the last task was to concatenate them with a space. So I will just copy my call to print and jump into the middle of this next to the plus operator. And here I'll add yet another string, just a white space character. So I'm opening up the quotes, putting a white space character, and then closing the quotes again. That's a perfectly valid string. It's just a string that only consists of one character, which is a space in that case. Again, I'm using plus operators left and right to stick these three strings together. So now when I press enter, I will get one string, bad space, man, all in one. And that's the exercise. This exercise is about slicing a string. And your task is to print the string zing by using slice notation to specify the correct range of characters in the string bazinga. So you start off with the string bazinga, and then you slice that string to take out only the part that says zing. Zing, let's go. My task is to slice bazinga to get zing. So I'll start off by assigning the string bazinga to a variable. So I'm just going to call it word in that case. Is bazinga a real word? OK, here we have bazinga. And then I'm going to use slice notation to get out the zinga part of it. And to use slice notation, you use square brackets. And inside of the square brackets, you have to put in the indices that you want to use. String indexing starts with zero. So B is at the index zero, A is at the index one, and then we have Z at the index two. So I can start off with two. And then in this case, I want to get everything that starts at two and goes to the end. So I can just do that by putting a colon there. So by typing word, square brackets, two, colon, close the square brackets, I should get out just the string zinga. And let's confirm by pressing Enter. Here it is. I sliced out Zynga from Bazinga. But when I look at the task again, I actually shouldn't get Zynga, but I should get the word Zing. So there's a little more that I need to do here. So instead of going all the way to the end, which I did here by just putting the colon and then not specifying a stopping index, I'll have to specify the stop index as well. And that could be by saying word and again starting at 2 and then going up 2. So this was 2, then the i is 3, n is 4, and the g is 5, and then the a is 6. And you have to specify 1 plus the last character that you want to get. So I want to go to 6, which is the index of a, and that means that I'm going to get everything up to a. So 2 colon 6 should give me the actual string that I'm looking for, which is zing. There you go. However, if you have a longer string and you want to get everything up to maybe the final character, but not the final character, then counting like this can get quite hard. So instead, you can go backwards. And you can also count indices starting with a minus. So the first one is going to be minus 1. And then g is going to be minus 2, etc. So I can instead specify word starting from 2 and then going all the way up to minus 1, which is going to do the same as saying 2 up to 6 in this case. It's going to go from here up to, but not including the final character. So that's another way to just get zing. All right, and that's actually the task, getting zing. And now I've found two ways to get zing without the final character A.